Very thankful to have the opportunity to have 18 of our 23 freshmen here on post this summer. Uh, it's a great chance for them to get to know VMI, for them to get to know their coaches, and for us to get to know them. Uh, it was a little bit different this year in how we rotated and how we worked and in order to social distance and follow all the COVID protocols in place. But I thought it was very beneficial for them. Um, all of them did well in their English class and psychology class they took and all of them improved athletically while they were here with VMI football. For those not familiar with uh, the NCAA guidelines, what were you able to, to do with the freshmen while they were here on post in July? Well, this time was uh, we were in voluntary eight hour work period for them. So we had eight hours a week in, in order to train them. And, uh, you know, we split that with on the field conditioning and in the weight room work for them. Uh, very little football stuff, but most of these kids are way ahead football IQ wise because of our Zoom meetings that we've been able to have with the new legislation due to COVID-19. We're about a week away from the start of August camp and can you uh, give us an update on summer conditioning and how that's gone for the entire team? Well, I don't know. I've only seen 18 young men here. I mean, to be honest with you, uh, you know, uh, we don't have that advantage here to be able to train with them. So it gets down to a core value that we have on the VMI football team of brotherhood and it also gets down to truly being a great brother rat and coming to shape not only for yourself, but for your teammate and, and also coming into training camp COVID free, which, you know, there's some requirements these kids got to do. They got to social distance. They got to wear a mask and they got to come in here unexposed because if we have an outbreak, we can't afford to shut down for two weeks on August 6th when we report. In July, uh, you were able to complete your coaching staff and also finish up recruiting, uh, adding a, a recruit. Uh, can you tell us about that? Well, most of our coaching staff was here. Uh, we added two volunteer coaches that uh, were not here, but they were pretty much hired in Alec Lettle, who will be a defensive volunteer assistant, and Adam Lovin, who will be an offensive uh, volunteer assistant. Alec will work with Tom Clark and the linebackers. Adam will work with Pat Ashford and, and the wide receivers. Uh, we signed a quarterback, uh, Colin Ironside, out of Tennessee. Uh, Colin is an outstanding young man, great academics, uh, really a man of character, great uh, dual-purpose quarterback, can run and throw, and we're very excited to add Colin to our football team. With no spring football, how has that affected the, uh, the two-deep evaluation process, and you know, what are you going to have to do as a staff to get to the point where you feel comfortable after August camp starts? Well, there's two huge impacts. The first is for the young men, their opportunity to impress coaches and improve in live-like situations, spring scrimmages, uh, was taken away. The biggest impact on the coaching staff is the ability to evaluate players that have to be key special team performers for us next season. So we are going to keep some of those young men out after practice and put them through some special teams drill work to see who can help us and where if as we enter training camp. Last year, Coach, uh, there were two significant freshman contributors, wide receiver uh, Leroy Thomas and, and free safety Josh Surratt. Uh, both had their seasons curtailed by injuries, knee injuries, and how's their rehab going? Well, from what I understand, it's way, way ahead of schedule. Now, I haven't been able to work with them, but Ryan Eddy, our trainer, has seen them video themselves training, and all instances of a is that we're ahead of schedule. They will come in this week now that post is open and the NCAA allows them to come on post. We will have all of our injured young men who had surgeries come on post this week for uh, our trainer, Ryan Eddy, to evaluate them. But I think they're ahead of schedule as far as their rehab. Well, Coach, COVID-19, without a doubt, uh, mandating changes in, it. in the way you, uh, you handle day-to-day -day things and uh, conduct day-to-day -day activities. What are some of the changes you're, you're going to have to do to promote a safe environment? Well, the first thing is you got to get wisdom and because uh, nobody's been through this before. So I do a lot, a lot of reading of different articles and it's difficult to get the truth on those articles, to be honest. I've talked with a lot of football coaches uh, weekly in the Southern Conference and coaches that I've worked with. The biggest thing that we have to concern ourselves with is distancing when we're not practicing football. When, once we start practicing football, I mean, we got to play football, but We've got a distance in meeting rooms, so that's causing us to redo our meeting schedule. We got a distance in the weight room, so that's differentiating how we lift. The showers, you know, that's in, in changing in the locker room, we have to go in shift work there. 
And, and the biggest thing is trying to encourage men to wear masks because they think they're invincible. And, uh, you know, we're trying to say, hey, you know, superheroes wear masks, you can too, and do it for each other. I mean, and we're trying to appeal to their sense of brotherhood, of being a great brother rat and uh, doing it for each other so we can stay healthy and, and compete at the highest level. Well, we're talking to you uh, the last week of July. Uh, of course, when this post, uh, things could change in a, n a number of hours or days. But, you know, given that where we are right now, you know, the 2020 schedule has seen some changes. What do you think it will take for FCS schools like VMI who are still going uh, to get a 2020 season uh, going this fall? Well, the obvious thing is we get a vaccine or a treatment plan. I think it's real easy to go. Uh, I think we have to find a way to play football safely. And I think we can. I think if every team in the country players commit to socially distancing, like not going to a pool party, not going out socially, wearing a mask, um, keeping six feet away, I think we can keep these young men healthy and compete. If, if, but if you have somebody that's selfish for a second and they, and they get it, then, you know, the contract tracing can take a lot of players out in a hurry. So I think there's got to be a, a way that we can play safely, and it comes down to really of a commitment of our young men of doing all the things they need to do.